you've mastered the controls, you're confident with your lines and breaking points around the circuit, and your skill level is rising each day. But where do you go from here? Now that you've checked out our beginner's guide to the latest game in the Formula 1 series, it's time to disable the assists and start decreasing those numbers. It'll be a tough journey, but with some time and practice, you'll be destroying the competition on track. To help you get there, we've asked a bunch of the top esports professionals within F1 2021 and compiled a full list for you to take advantage of. Make sure you subscribe to the Traction channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any other pro tips and tricks in the future. Before we begin, however, we mentioned changing fuel modes in the previous beginner's guide to help with fuel saving. Now, as we were running a preview build of the game, we thought this would be enabled to come launch, and this unfortunately wasn't the case, so apologies for getting that one wrong. And now, onto the video. These were suggested by Ruben Vallejo and Lucas Blakely as they explained how changing your brake bias and differential settings can save you tenths throughout every single lap. As with the real world series, brake bias is constantly adjusted for just about every corner on a circuit. The driver is able to control the brake balance between front and rear through the bias. In F1 2021, this is shown as a percentage between 50% and 70%. At 70%, more force is applied to the front brakes than the rear brakes, whereas at 50%, the force is applied evenly between the two. Too much bias and the car tends to lock up the front tyres, but too little and the car can become unstable during braking and turning. Increasing the bias, moving it forwards, works well for hard braking zones that require little trail braking, such as Bahrain Turn 1. Moving the bias rearwards is suitable for corners that do require some trail braking, such as Stow at Silverstone. If you don't know what trail braking is, by the way, don't worry, we will get to that shortly. Lucas uses brake bias adjustments to help rotate or stabilise the car going into a corner, depending on what is needed. If he needs rotation, he decreases it, whilst if he needs stability, he increases it. Ruben recommends generally keeping the bias more rearwards focused, as it is faster overall, but this does require finding your limits to avoid spinning out on turning. As for differential, this setting affects how much of the available power is delivered to each of the rear tyres individually. Lucas uses this to improve either traction or rotation on the throttle, depending on what is required, giving him a better balance of grip. An open differential allows the tyres to rotate at different speeds, which is useful for longer high-speed corners, whereas a closed differential locks the rear tyres together, which is well suited to low-speed corners and can provide much-needed traction when exiting a corner. A higher number equals a closed diff, whilst a lower number equals an open diff. Ruben recommends setting the differential to 90 or 95 for slower corners and lowering it slightly for the faster sections. When it comes to learning racecraft, the best way is through multiplayer lobbies. Ewan Lenauer mentions how important their usage is, as jumping into a 5 lap race session is a good way to learn how to fight against other drivers. The low number of laps means you're able to push your car to the absolute limits and perfect your racecraft. Read the cars ahead, find out the best places to overtake, and use this information to your advantage for future races. As for longer length lobbies such as 25% distance races, this is the best time to test out different strategies for each track. Try starting out on the hards and switching to softs later on or maybe even try adding extra fuel and pushing to the maximum for as many laps as possible. Find out what you're comfortable with and determine how beneficial it was for your result. All of this practice will soon be applied to what is undoubtedly the best place to learn, league racing. Leagues allow you to learn so much more than you would just racing others in public lobbies. It allows a more competitive and safer environment to race in, and also keeps you motivated throughout a season to push and practice more than you usually would. Lucas recommends trying out different setups and strategy ideas before a league race, so you can devise your perfect race plan before the lights go out. Lucas Blakely and Jonas Rutten both brought up the importance of this one. Simply put, trail braking involves balancing the brake pedal as you enter the corners, leading to a better car control, better rotation, and lap time gains through the turns. In Lucas's words, trail braking allows you to unlock extra lap time under braking. As a general rule, do your hardest braking at the start of a braking zone when you have the most grip and downforce. Then, when you begin to approach the apex and start to wind the lock on, release the brake in a smooth and controlled manner to allow the car to rotate naturally into the corner. This is one of the most important techniques in racing as it is worth a lot of lap time when perfected. Jonas also highlights the importance of this, saying you should hold the brake as long as possible to rotate the car into a corner in order to handle the understeer. Almost everyone mentioned the importance of setups and how to find one that's right for you individually. Valentin Brufer references time trial mode as a useful resource to try out setups if you're uncomfortable with exploring its complicated nature. The ability to use a rival setup and compare it to your own is incredibly understated, as if it feels comfortable, you're able to use it for yourself within other sessions. Ruben Vallejo mentions that every setup will have a lot of differences in the wing and downforce levels, and Matthias van Erwen notes that setups is all about testing, testing, and more testing. See what works best for you and work around that. 
Ewan Lenauer states that you should try to understand the behaviour of your car and see what changes you can feel the effects of when changing a setup. A good setup that suits yourself can change everything. Try different and opposite settings and see what's comfortable and fast. Finally, Patrick Sipos gives some more specific setup advice, suggesting that higher front suspension and front roll bar settings tend to work well on most tracks, albeit not every single one. He also recommends using maximum tyre pressures on the rears, whilst going two clicks below maximum on the fronts. Now this entry doesn't mean that you should be Tokyo drifting throughout every corner on the track. It means that by inducing extra rotation into the corner, just between the limits of grip and oversteer, you can gain lap time. By chucking the rear of the car out slightly on turn-in, it can give you a better rotation on entry, allowing you to get back on the throttle earlier, leading to those time gains we all desperately seek. This will take some time to practice and perfect the setup, brake bias and differential, so experiment with different settings to find that perfect sweet spot. Two of the drivers noted the importance of this drifting mechanic. Patrick mentions that drifting is overpowered and can gain you a lot of time, whilst Ruben also states that a little drift can help rotate the car from the rear when going into a corner. Now remember, we're talking about tiny inputs to induce oversteer and rotation into the apex of a corner so none of this 45 degree drifting that leads to exploding tyres. It's inevitable that the floodgates will open at some stage and cause a slippery experience for all drivers on track. Lucas briefly mentions the rain, saying you should be smooth and calculated, and that overdriving will only make you slower. With the real world of Formula 1, starting the race in second gear on the grid is a well-known secret. This reduces wheel spin from the rear tyres and can lead to a faster launch upon lights out. Higher gears can also be used throughout the race, especially during corner exit as too much wheel spin can ruin your day. Apply the throttle more gently than usual to avoid this, and then try your best to keep your inputs as smooth as possible. Remember, it's much better losing a second a lap driving carefully rather than losing an entire lap by pushing too hard. Make sure to practice this before you jump into a league or multiplayer race, as you can always expect the unexpected. And now, the most important point on this entry, and one that should not be discounted by any means. Learn from the best. There are plenty of resources nowadays that enables direct interaction with professionals in esports, including the F1 series. Your favourite driver will most likely be based on a video streaming platform, available to show you how they drive fast and what they do to get ahead of the competition. Valentin Brufer tells us his main point, which is to watch the best players and look at what they do differently compared to yourself, but it's also important to find out what's best for you in terms of driving styles. Ewan Lenauer mentions watching F1 esports drivers' content, such as hot laps, full races and streams. Pay attention to the lines they take and other elements such as how they're using ERS. It's a great way to learn new things and compare what they do to what you do. Also, they can give good setups, settings and general advice. Finally, watching a professional at their best is always an inspiration. Examining their methods to extract those tiny margins can save you a whole load of time if applied to your style. Go out there, support your favourite driver and watch them compete at a high level. A big thank you goes out to every F1 esports professional we talk to. Links to their social media are as follows. Valentin Brufer can be found at Vaster Racer. Ruben Vallejo is at Ruben Vallejo F1. Lucas Blakely is at Lucas Blakely 01. Jonas Rutten is at Jonas underscore R14. Matthias van Erven is at CRG underscore Matthias. Ewan Lenauer is at SHZ underscore Ewan. And Patrick Sipos is at CRG Patrick. Have these tips helped you find those extra few seconds? Do you know of any more? Be sure to leave us a like and let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep it pinned unless it's wet.